Good morning. As a Catholic priest, I'm very concerned about the current state of affairs. Things are falling apart, and we need to do something about it. That's why I want to talk to you about a very important issue, facilities management. <laughs> That's right. I'm not only a priest, but the plant manager of an older facility. Never in the seminary did anyone ever tell me just how much time a priest would have to spend on maintenance. It's always something. Clogged drains, leaky roofs, broken water heaters, and downed trees. Fortunately for me, my father was a carpenter. And that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. And he really taught me a lot about construction. So I'm able to have intelligent conversations with my maintenance staff and with contractors. The challenge for me when I first came to the retreat house in Redlands was that I couldn't find the locations of underground electrical conduits, water lines, sewer lines, and septic tanks. It was like living in an archaeological project where much had been buried and forgotten. So this is one of the examples of a more detailed map that I inherited when I came to the retreat house. One of the unique aspects of El Carmelo is that we are surrounded by 20 acres of citrus and avocado groves. The Carmelite order originated in the 13th century in the Holy Land on a mountain called Mount Carmel, a name that literally means Garden of the Lord. Our friars around the world seek to offer places of beauty where people can come to enjoy rest and spiritual renewal. So for me, grove maintenance is not just an economic activity, but a spiritual endeavor as well. I have to keep the groves healthy and beautiful. However, some of the groves are over 50 years old, and they've been neglected, and the cost of maintenance is high. As a trained accountant, I realized the importance of maximizing our resources and minimizing our expenses. The challenge for me was to restore the groves and break even in three years before being reassigned. But where do I start? I didn't know the scope of the project, I didn't have a budget, and I'm a priest, not a farmer. Around this time, I met Pat Dolan and found out that he works for Esri. And so I asked him an innocent question. Can you make me a map? With a big smile, he said, oh yes, I can make you a map. But he didn't just print out a paper map. He sent me an email with a link to an online map. And the Carmelites were finally entering the 21st century. Pat came out and showed me how to use ArcGIS online and how to collect data. And that was just in time, too, because only the week before, I had a water line break, and we couldn't find the shutoff valves. So one of the first things I did was to walk around the groves with my iPhone and take the locations of all of the water valves, just so that I'd be ready for the next crisis. Next, I mapped the grove boundaries to understand where to start the restoration project. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has a program to help farmers to improve soil quality. So the map gave me the information and the tools that I needed to prepare a scope of work. I applied for and was awarded an $8,000 grant to improve the soil conditions and to minimize erosion. Now I needed to determine just how much fruit I should be able to produce. I did a full tree count, and using standard yield statistics, I estimated the uh, amount of fruit that I should be able to produce. And then I added that information to the map. The next challenge was figuring out how much fruit I could afford to sell to distributors without impacting our own needs. El Carmelo's guests have come to appreciate the fresh orange juice and guacamole that we serve. We also sell fresh fruit to the local community and donate to food banks who help feed the poor. The healthier the groves, the more we can all benefit. The next challenge was figuring out that the, which groves were in the worst shape. 
Some of the groves are in better shape than others. So Pat came back, and using imagery from Digital Globe and LiDAR, he helped me to assess the condition of the groves. This information helped me to confirm which groves needed the most immediate attention and allowed me to determine a more realistic production number for each grove. I now have a baseline that I can use to me measure the success of the program. Rather than simply hoping that it's working, I can see and measure its success. I hired a grove management company, and on the first day, the grove manager came out. He asked a familiar question. Do you have a map? With a big smile, I said, oh, yes, I have a map, and not just any map. I proudly unrolled my ArcGIS map on the hood of his truck, and we discussed a three-year management plan without even getting my sandals dirty. He said, this is great. Can I have it? I gave him the map along with a link to the online map. And so he's now able to continue to keep up on the pr pro progress of our program as information is added. The value for me was that I didn't need to become a GIS expert to use the map. The map gave me the tools that I needed to manage the groves, monitor production, and share this information in an intelligent and understandable format with the next friar who comes to take my place in three years. He will be able to hit the ground running and continue our ministry of sharing the beauty of creation with all our visitors. Amen.